It's the middle of March and that means we have about eight weeks to our average last frost date. It's time to plant some seeds. Hi, it's Kayla with 5 Canadian Acres and today I'm going to show you the seeds that I'm starting when I have about eight weeks to my average last frost date. Now remember, your average last frost date is just a guess, so as we get closer to that date, we'll keep an eye on the forecast to see if we need to wait a few extra days to plant things out or we could even plant them a little earlier. Now, the seeds I'm starting is not an exhaustive list. They're just the more common things and things that are easier to grow. The most important thing to be planting eight weeks before your last frost would be your tomatoes and your peppers. You could plant your peppers, especially hot peppers, earlier than this, but it's still not too late. Just give them a little bit of heat when you germinate them to make sure that they germinate quicker. If you can't start these things early, no problem. There are a lot of local greenhouses where you can pick up the started plants when it gets closer to time to put them out. I've already started some of my hot peppers and some of my longer growing tomatoes, but I'm gonna be starting a few more peppers and a few more tomatoes today. The first pepper I'm going to be starting is a sweet banana pepper. These I like to grow just for snacking as well as pickling. They make good pickled peppers. I'm also growing these golden one, sorry, golden California wonder peppers. I grew these last year and they didn't get very big, but it was really dry. So we'll try them again. And I'm hoping to pick some as well when they're green earlier and then I can have green peppers too. And lastly, I've already started these, but I'm starting more and that would be jalapeno peppers because these are very important. <laughs> We like to make salsa and last year for the first time I made something called cowboy candy. It's basically um, jalapenos in a simple syrup and they were delicious so I'm doing a lot more this year. Now for tomatoes I'm also going to be starting a, um, another cherry tomato, just, just a plain old cherry tomato. This is an heirloom so I'll try to save some seeds. And I'm also going to be starting this Roma VF. This is a Roma tomato, which is known as a paste tomato. So these are what's best used for sauces. A paste tomato just means it's really meaty and there's not as much seeds and juice inside. Whereas your big slicer tomatoes have a lot of seeds and juice and they're more for eating fresh. So the paste tomatoes are good if you wanna do canning. I'm also going to be planting these Scotia tomatoes. And these I planted last year, they did really good. They're just a medium sized average tomato and you can use them for canning or eating. The other thing I'm going to be planting is a Aunt Molly's ground cherry. Now I grew these again last year and sometimes people say they'll self seed. So that means that any sort of fruit that fell on the ground will winter over, kind of rot away and the seeds in the ground will grow new ones. So we'll see if I get any what we call volunteers, ones that just pop up. But I'm going to start some anyways because I did really enjoy those. The next thing I'm going to be starting are my brassicas. So your brassicas are things like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, kohlrabi, um, also turnips and rutabaga are technically brassicas. So brassicas are cool weather crops. They like the weather when it's cooler. Um, so by starting these early, you can put them in the ground at a later date, but you'll just get a later harvest. So I'm going to start these early to try to get them finished before it gets too hot this summer and do some succession planting. The other thing with brassicas is they are very bad for bugs. The cabbage moth, those little white moths you see flying around all the time, lay their eggs and then they're little green worms and they eat all your brassicas. So if you're going to be growing these, I highly recommend having some sort of cover. You can get floating row covers, really thin like a screen net netting. Um, there's lots of different ways online. So the first cabbage I'm going to start is an early Copenhagen cabbage. I grew this last year. Again, it did really good. So I'm going to try to get that one going. I'm also going to be trying for the first time a Tierra. These ones it says coated. That means the seeds are coated. Now these ones only take 45 days, they're a hybrid. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how early I can get some cabbages this year. I'm also gonna be doing a red cabbage for some variety. And also they say that the cabbage moths don't like to lay their eggs on the red cabbage just because it's red and not green. So we'll test that out. Next, I'm gonna be starting some broccoli. I grew these ones last year. It's called a munchkin. So they're actually short, they only grow about a foot. And then once you cut the main piece, the main head off, they'll grow side shoots so you can get a second harvest. And they did really well. Even once they started to go to flower in the summer, you can eat the flowers and they still stay pretty tender. 
I'm also going to try two new types of broccolis just to try and see what I like better, if there's any difference in the tastes. I'm going to be growing a Sun King hybrid, as well as this one, which is a Green Magic. Um, these hybrids are good for into the warmer temperatures, not going to flowers, so we'll see. I'm also trying this fun little broccoli, it's called Romanesco. It almost is like a broccoli slash cauliflower. So just a fun experiment to see how that turns out. And lastly, I'll also be growing some cauliflower. I didn't get any cauliflower last year, but we'll try again. So just an early snowball cauliflower. The next thing we can be planting are our annual herbs. These are herbs that we have to plant every year. They don't come back. Katie to say, I'm going to be growing some thyme. This is actually a perennial, which means it comes back every year to a zone four. So I'm kind of a zone three, four. So I had some last year, but I'm going to start some more just in case it doesn't come back, but we'll see if mine from last year comes back. Um, uh, another thing is oregano. Again, oregano is hardy to a zone five, which I am not. So I had some last year, so probably won't come back, but you never know, but I'll plant some more of that. And then we'll be planting some basil. I have some basil seeds that I saved from last year. It is just a regular, um, I believe it's called a Genovese basil. So I'll be hoping my seeds germinate well, as well as this is called a holy basil. It's also known as Tulsi or sacred basil. It's a little bit different than normal basil. We'll try that one out. And then lastly, we'll be growing some cilantro. So we'll have to start that now for our salsa. These are the seeds I'm going to be starting in the next couple of days as I'm eight weeks to my last frost. Stay tuned and I'll have another episode at six weeks to last frost where we can see how these are doing and then what we can also be starting then. If you need help in learning how to start seeds, I have a video about how to start tomato seeds and you can start your peppers, tomatoes, and um, your brassicas like that. And if you need to learn how to start more of your herbs and flowers, check out my onion video because they can be planted in a similar fashion. The trick is plant your seed two times deep as it is wide. So if it's this wide, plant it that deep. Little seeds closer to the surface, bigger seeds deeper down. Good luck with all your planting and we'll see you next time. Bye.